Uh, so yeah, I'm Holly, I'm from TU Delft, where I'm doing my PhD in industrial design, and I'm gonna talk about a deeply collaborative project that we've been working on designing uh, connected objects for expats. I'm here with my collaborator and colleague, uh, Fabian. Uh, so if you have questions that are very design related, I might direct you towards him because he's the more qualified designer between the two of us. Uh, so we have an unprecedented number of people living abroad right now. Uh, the statistics aren't exactly very clear, but a UN report from 2013 said there's this many people living abroad. Uh, the largest percentage of that, 72 million, are living in Europe. Now, connectivity is making the world a lot smaller. Uh, we can celebrate a birthday with a friend over Skype. We can text people internationally. We can read a newspaper online. These are wonderful technologies that I can personally attest to. They make my life better as an expat. But we would like to question specifically how design within an Internet of Things world can support expats to feeling connected to home? How can we harness the unique connectivity um, that an IoT object does by fusing that connectivity into a physical form? And how can we put that connectivity and data into a physical form that we can engage with? So I'm going to be a little provocative here. How can we make connectivity and the data that affords uh, how can we make it material? How can we make uh, it as material as the object itself? So this is a very big, kind of scary question. Uh, and for big, scary questions, you need a dream team. Uh, and ours, we're an academics from all sorts of different backgrounds, for anthropology, engineering, materialism stuff, uh, design, uh, and uh, a fabulous design studio, um, who I get the impression a lot of you already know at the Incredible Machine. Uh, so we made, uh, we joined forces to create a thoughtful object that wasn't a gadget. And by that, we were looking at something that doesn't necessarily prior prioritize the technology, but keeps things kind of situated, um, you know, weave technology into this bigger picture. So back to the design context, uh, what does it mean to be uh, an expat? It just so happens we did some research about this. Uh, we went into expats' homes and really looked at what they were uh, surrounding themselves, what kind of materials, what kind of objects to uh, have that sense of home and, and what that meant to them. Uh, we did really big research that I'm going to talk about very briefly. Uh, we identified kind of three main things happening there. So when a family moves to a new place, uh, they start doing this process that we called nesting, which is trying to make that new place into a home. And as an expat, what we found a lot of people doing was bringing things and collecting things from home, we called it procuring, uh, into that nest. And that those objects then kind of work to promote the sense of maintaining a sense of identity from home. Now, the stuff that they brought was super specific to their families, to their cultures, and the granularity of those objects were just, just far too unique for us to try and recreate. But at the core of all of this process was that the collecting and the procuring of these things, like the act of doing that, was what gave people this sense of connectedness to home. So with that knowledge about how these expats uh, feel connected, how can we put that into an Internet of Things object? You know, with, with an Internet of Things object, how can collecting and procuring digital data flows build on that sense of connectedness for the expats? How can an Internet of Things object make the practice of procuring digital data tangible? And by doing that, how can we bring it into the element of the everyday? And so we created a family of objects called Geist. Uh, which is supposed to refer to bringing the spirit of home into the object. So they have three objects here, uh, a clock, a calendar, and a radio. Since we are short on time, I'm going to introduce them all, but kind of spend a little bit more attention on the radio. Just to reiterate, these are three conceptual products. Just want to make sure everyone's clear. Uh, so the first object is the clock. Um, we're going to watch time pass. That's the clock. And what you have here is there's a webcam in the expat's original home culture, or country, and it's 
pointed to uh, just the horizon, and we take a pixel from that webcam and then make it the color of the face of the clock. So it's, it's a real-time feed. You can watch the sun rise and set. You can watch weather pass at your home country via this clock. The next object was the calendar. Uh, and the calendar collects the voices of the local Twitter sphere of the expat's home. Uh, so when the calendar prints a new day, it also prints the trending topic of that local area for that day. And this urges a kind of physical handling. Uh, when you tear off the, the date, you have a recognition of time and, the, and a conversation that's, that's passing. And lastly, the radio. So, as you may have noticed, the uh, radio is not tuning into the, the radio waves of the particular area that it is located, as most radios do. Uh, instead, what we have is the dial has two locations on the sp spectrum. So it's the expat's current location, in this case it's Rotterdam, and the uh, former location, uh, the original home in Cape Town. And, um, it's interesting because it's not a clean line as to where one radio, the radio stations of Rotterdam uh, stop and the radio stations of Cape Town begin, that they're integrated with one another uh, kind of randomly. So by adjusting the knob, the, uh, um, the expat decides to choose if he wants to tune into the radio news broadcasting of their foreign uh, of their home country or experiencing um, the radio stations of their new country. Uh, and I can say from personal experience, having lived with this for a little while, it's, it's pretty interesting because in, sometimes you have a pause and you're trying to figure out where the radio station that you're listening to right now is from. The content, it sounds like a doo-wop song from the American 50s, but it's actually coming from the Dutch station, which is an interesting kind of thing to communicate about the experience of being an expat in such an um, integrated world. So the mundane performing of, uh, performance of turning this dial daily, it, it literally manifests the physical and social and cultural and temporal divide that the expat has to cross every day in their experience. So as we are academics, we like to do papers and studies. Uh, so our next steps are going to be uh, focusing on the radio, and we're going to develop some different versions of it with different materials really to explore this idea of, of how data and connectivity can be used as a design material. And as everybody here knows, the Internet of Things offers us new means for expressions. And we really want to try to make use of connectivity and data as not just a feature on, a, on an object, but, but something that's really integral to the materiality of the object itself. Um, and we saw this again from the expats that we were speaking with that uh, these material things, these physical things were really important to make them feel connected. And we think that the data and the connectivity is just the next step to kind of bringing that further in design and it's something that we think is a really promising direction. And thank you very much.